Hey guys and gals, never here from Trickwing Game. I'm Sylvie Mountain Sword of the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Mice T, Sylvia's Path. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> um, my, um, girlfriend. Hi, Julie. Nice to meet you. Julie gives Cynthia once over. I have a feeling she's the first person to be unimpressed by her gleaming scales and fangs. Wait a second. This is the Sylvia you were complaining about at the bar, and now she's your girlfriend? I'm immediately sweltering, sweltering under my undercoat. Julie, don't tell her that! Sylvia puts a hand on my arm. Don't worry, Margaret, I'm not surprised. I know my behavior was frustrating, but we got through that and realized we, we, actually like, we actually really like each other. Julie remains unconvinced. Wait, this all happened the last four days? I'm suddenly reminded of how few days it's been since a, since a time that it feels like eons ago. Yeah, it's been sort of a whirlwind. What have you been doing this whole time? I even got a job working afternoons at that tea place Gavin runs, and I haven't seen you since I got it. Wait, you're working at Tea Friends now? Yeah, I was gonna surprise you when you came in, but you never did. Gavin said he hasn't seen you either. Oh, well, I'm happy you got a job with him, and it'll be nice seeing you at the shop so often. I've really wanted to see you again. Not enough to text, apparently. Her words sliced me in half. I'm sorry, I've just been really busy. I've been doing a lot of, uh, new stuff. Looks like it. She takes another suspicious glance at Sylvia. She's not, like, putting you up to this, is she? What do you mean? I don't know, you've been dating for three days and now you're dyeing your hair, dressing with your tits out, and working as her sidekick in this weird sideshow she's running. No, I mean, she's introduced me to a lot of new things this last couple days, but... Yes, we've both been introducing each other to a lot of new things. We're not compelling each other to do anything. Yeah, sure. I don't know, it just seems like you're diving headfirst into some new relationship and letting her redefine everything about you. You're not acting like yourself. A yawning abyss opens up beneath me. Oh god. Oh fuck, oh god. I... Is Julie right? Has Sylvia been just been controlling me through the whole time since that night? I'm still me, right? Of course you're still you, Margaret. I can't listen to you about that. Margaret, I'm only here because you let me stay with you. You've wanted to experience all these things. Sylvia and I are just helping you. But am I... Is that true? The chasm below me seems to be swallowing me. Uh, Margaret? That, that's... Tell her what you really feel. I don't know what I feel. Say what you felt, say what you've let yourself do these last few days. Say what you've been able to do. The abyss slows its advance. Merging, ooh, merging of personas. Yes. Okay. Well, I can understand how this might look a bit a little suspicious. It's only been a couple days, I know, and from your perspective, it's such a dramatic difference. And it is, but there's a lot of stuff you've missed. I've kindled a new appreciation for fashion. What clothes can do for me and how I can use them for all sorts of purposes or what they can do for my self-image. How can I think of myself and my body, that is? How I don't have to be ashamed of it and that I can even use it to bring me some happiness and excitement. And I've been getting rid of all my self-doubt, too. Weren't you getting it on my case the other day for being a doormat? Uh, oh, yeah, I guess. Then why are you getting on my case for following your advice? Yeah, keep going. I'm standing up for myself now. I've stood up to strangers and my boss and everyone who tried to make me feel less than I should. I stood up for myself to Sylvia, even. Yeah, she's not shy about speaking her mind. I'm not remaking myself to fit with her, des her desires. I'm remaking myself to be the person I want to be. Who's that? Oh. That's it, darling. The darkness beneath me is replaced with a warm amber glow. Peggy's filling me with more of her essence than ever before. It's not just a stream of water I can turn on or off. It's the sea I find my, I find my mind sailing in. I mean, really, Jules? You're, you're concerned about me like this? I've got a throng of followers queuing up for hours to see me and my gorgeous girlfriend, and you think this is a problem somehow? If I didn't know you were such a dear friend, I might think you were jealous of how well we're cleaning up at this convention. Julie is successfully knocked back on her heels. No, I'm selling a lot of pics. I'm doing just fine. I wouldn't doubt it, but you've always been such a cute little thing. She's rattled by the term she's, she's used to using on me. Oh, thanks. You've just got to let me buy a full set of photos from you. I've missed that cuddly body of yours since we hooked up in college. I'm sure Sylvia's not the jealous type, are you, honey? Not at all. Julie holds the photos tight enough that I'm worried she'll crease them. Oh, uh, sure, if I have any left over, I can give you them for free. I'd love that. Won't you pick... Why don't I pick them up at Tea Friends next time I'm there? I'll call ahead to make sure it's during one of your shifts. Then I can have you over to my place and we'll have another movie night like back in the day. I'm like a bunch of... Capiranas? I'm like a bunch of Capiranas and we'll pig out on nacho tater tots. Just like old times, hmm? This specific example seems to both surprise and mollify her. Oh, yeah! Those nights were great! 
And you'll, uh, you'll have the time? For my best friend, I'll make the time. I have a feeling she'll take the opportunity to grill me more later, but she seems a little more at ease. Oh, sure. Uh, cool. So, I've got more selling to do. I'll see you around. I look forward to it. She twiddles her fingers in goodbye and shuffles away into the crowd. Phew! That was something. Thanks for giving me so much support there, Peggy. No, wait, did I take control just now? Margaret didn't use the trigger word. Did you, Margaret? Margaret? Peggy? Look inside myself and can't find anyone else there with me. Wait, what's going on? Who's in charge now? I trace the last few minutes back to see where a, hand a handoff occurred. I don't remember any happening. It's more, I remember both sides of the conversation we had when Julie confronted us. Going farther back, I remember every moment of the last two days from my both perspectives. I remember flirting with Gavin in my night with Sylvia. I recall the shopping trip and waking up from it. What's more, I remember looking. What's more, I, is I remember looking into Peggy's eyes and Margaret's eyes in some like in my subconscious. Oh my God, did we merge? I was like, no, water time. All right, y'all, and we are back. Okay. Oh no, there we go. Okay. Margaret, are you okay? Yes, I think something might have happened with, um, us, though. Oh, do you need some help with that? I'm not sure. I stand ankle-deep in a shallow pool of dizziness. S sorry, is, is the line still moving? Oh, sorry. Are you okay to keep going, Margaret? We can take a break if you need one. It takes a moment to come up with an honest answer. I find I'm still just as full of bravado as it was before Julie appeared. I think so. I put some more authority in my voice. Yes, yeah, sorry for the unplanned theatrics, folks. We mustn't keep Madame Nagalaski's public waiting, hmm? Sylvia takes my word in the hand of the next person waiting in line. I'm left to deal with the crowd and a nagging existential blur in the back of my mind. Don't worry, my good people. You'll have your session soon enough. The night ends earlier than it did yesterday for a number of reasons. We'd already been going for some time and we wanted to allow ourselves a good night's sleep on top of that. Also, there was a small existential consideration that I wasn't quite sure who I was anymore. I filled in Sylvia with enough details to keep her from worrying too much. The car ride home didn't offer much more of a chance to talk with the driver there. He'd gotten remarkably used to ferrying around a snake woman and her now fuzzy girlfriend, but something still warranted some discretion. Hmm. Untangled. I hold the door open for Sylvia and wait, and wait the time it takes to get all of her tail in before closing it behind us. So, do you want to talk about, talk about it now, or are you tired? I can't claim I'm not, but I thought I ought to figure this all out. That sounds good. So, what happened exactly? I think you mentioned something about losing touch with someone? Well, I suppose that's sort of a sideways manner of looking at it. Uh, no one else is in my head but me, but I don't think I'm exactly Margaret or Peggy. Are you someone new? Do you have a name? I suppose I might be new, but I still have all their memories, so I don't feel like I'm a totally novel personality. And I suppose I'm probably Margaret in a way, because I have her memories and body. It just feels a little inexact. And this happened when you were talking to Julie. Yes, when I was talking to... I cocked my head at the idea of using the pronoun. Well, when Julie was talking to Margaret, she said how Margaret was acting like herself, and she had this crisis of selfhood. Like, what if Julie was right? Peggy tried to reassure her, but since her presence is a product of her this new in mind manipulation, it was hard for Margaret to believe her. Eventually, Peggy encouraged Margaret to plead her case that the things she was doing were things she wanted to do, but now only had the ability to do. At some point, I think I was the one speaking, and when I stopped, I couldn't find anyone else in here with me. It sounds like the two of you might have merged together. That's what I thought, but I don't know. Neither of them explicitly tried to do that. You don't think I made them disappear, do you? Don't worry about that. Even when Peggy took over, Margaret was still there after a single command. I doubt you could do something that serious so easily. Es especially after such a positive experience. I bristled at her claiming the experience was positive, but then I think back on it. Well, I guess it was positive. It felt good to let that part of my personality out, but it also felt good to, to, to be permitted to do that. Yeah, Margaret be looking all kinds of fine in that dress. Damn, girl, you gonna slay some people. It's as though I was glad to open a door for someone, and I was also grateful that someone opened it for me. It sounds like dis it sounds a little disorienting. It is, but it's almost almost only a disorienting. Like, everything would be fine if I knew what on earth was going on. Would you like some help with that, then? I mean, sure, but how many people have you already helped today? Dozens, I'd imagine. Don't your eyes get tired, dear? It's no problem at all. You think I'm going to help all those people and not help my girlfriend? Well, those people don't have access to you at all hours. I'm not going to do anything before you ask, but I can try to help you untangle this whenever you want. 
A dozen needling worries make me hesitate, spanning from concern for silly so from concern for Sylvia to dread at learning what I'll find under my consciousness. But none of them are good enough to make me refuse the offer. If you insist, okay, we can do it right here then, if that's okay. I can't think of a better place. Let's begin then. Margaret, look into my eyes. Thing contains separating and re-emerging personas. Menu, yes. Yes. Okay. The first command I've heard from her in 48 hours reintroduces me to their power. Her fully slitted eyes, the ones I thought I'd seen and appreciated, now dominate all my attention. Until now, I've never noticed how entrancing they are. Her pupils look like a portal beyond the stars to a realm untouched by lighter gravity. We're going to retrace our steps back into your subconscious mind. Do you remember when we did that? I do. Then this might be a little easier this time. I want you to remember how we, how we prepared you. How we made this very apartment disappear. Remember how easy and right it was to discard the material world around you. The room around me vanishes away again, but much more easily this time. Once informed of the transients of, my, of the physical reality around me, it's much easier to dismiss. Once again, there's nothing but Sylvia's voice and presence to guide and comfort me. Is it just us now? It is. Is it more comfortable now? Trusting me and being supported by me? It is. Another benefit of being my girlfriend, hmm? It's still not far enough to start- I'm still not far enough under to avoid a sleepy giggle. Hmm, yeah. Then let's go down to your subconsciousness again. Travel that same path into your mind. Make yourself smaller while drawing yourself inside. Your mind is your center. Realign yourself with that center. I find myself traveling through a groove I'd formed in my mind, an emptiness inside space that acts as a conduit to draw me within. Deeper. I lose track of Sylvia's eyes, but I'm still carried by her voice and presence. Deeper. A warmth and familiarity left from my last visit to my subconscious approaches from inside me. The comforting refuge I'd created welcomes me. Deeper. Now I see it. The cozy study with Peggy's annex attached, only a few moments left until I'm there. And arrived. Her words seemed to set me down in the room like a doll into a dollhouse. I'm left to wonder if she could have done it the moment she told me to look into her eyes. Can you hear me? I can. Is everything how you remember it? I soak in the ambience of the crackling fire, the steaming tea in the fully stocked wardrobe. It is. That's a good sign, then. If it's still the same subconscious, that means you haven't lost anything. The thought is comforting as the thought is as comforting as my surroundings. Oh, yes, of course. Okay, now comes the harder part. I want you to shut your eyes. I want you to bring Margaret and Peggy out as distinct entities. I dutifully shut my eyes, at least the ones I think I have in this cognitive state. I want you to remember the experience if you had you've had as Margaret and Peggy, the desires and goals you've held, the moments that made you feel like yourselves. I recall everything I'm able to st I'm able to starting with this afternoon and going backward. I have fewer memories as Peggy, but they're still just as vivid. My attraction to Sylvia is shared between both sets of thoughts. It's a distinct common ground between both. They diverge more beyond that. I remember how good it was to assert my desires and how scared I was about letting them consume the rest of my life. A dual set of viewpoints superimposed themselves like two images reflected in a single gemstone. Can you picture them? I can, but they're sort of overlapping. Let's separate them, then. Push all of Margaret's memories and associations to one side and Peggy's to another. I concentrate on the conceptual ideas in front of me and push them to either side like I'm sorting through a box of old photos. No hierarchy is attached to either, no preference assigned, just two distinct if overlapping sets. Each happy memory is just as cherished no matter who it belongs to, but they have to go in one of the two piles. In time, everything is separated. Okay, they're done. Good. On the count of three, I want Margaret and Peggy to both open their eyes. Alright, I'm gonna pause it right there, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that no notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm gonna give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all for all I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you going above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Tresum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to our ultimate tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye